Hello, hello, everybody. It's 3.11 p.m. Central Time on the 11th of October, 2022. It's Tuesday here in the United States. Hope you're doing well. Just jumping on here to say hi, do a quick update. We're actually going to record this and put it over on YouTube. And let me bring you up to speed on what's going on. We'll get a display capture turned on here just so you can see. Whoa, what's going on there? just so you can see a little bit better of what I'm looking at here. All right, so in my last update, we talked about the 6.2, which struck at the tip of the arrow right here. Since then, obviously, over to the east, one magnitude less. And this is exactly one magnitude less. Let me bring you over to the USGS plate boundary map. We'll show you the spots which moved. So previously, we were at 6.2 out here on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Now, about uh, about 1,000 miles, well, a little bit less, 800 miles over to the east. That's where our new 5.2 has struck. But really, the way I want you to look at this is 6.2 and 5.2, 24 hours apart, across 1,000 miles of this. From here, the little tip, over to the eastern tip, and that's the central Mid-Atlantic Ridge, connecting between Africa and South America. Now, really, if you look at it, we're going back. We could trace the arrow back. It takes us back to Colombia. Colombia, Nevado del Ruiz volcano, and several other earthquakes tallying up to near 6.0, tallied up over the past several days, going into last week. So the eruptions and the upper fives all took place over here, where Colombia meets into the Caribbean. Do you see that? Now, I have an arrow that goes from Columbia across out to where these two earthquakes are. So we get 6.0 level activity here. Then energy transfers out and over to the east on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. That's what's taken place. And it's continued to spread. There's still a push coming across. And the way we know there's a push coming across, we can look at the other areas across South America and Central America. For instance, up here on the north side of Central America, we have multiple mid-range 4s. If you add this together, it equals 5.0. 4.4 plus 4.1 plus 4.1 plus 4.0 plus 4.5 plus 4.0 plus, plus a bunch of 3s. Now, out here in the Gulf of Mexico, it's somewhat of a more rare location. We're directly next to some oil pumping operations that I think the Mexicans are running down there. Offshore rigs and platforms. Anyway, oil pumping operations and multiple earthquakes there went over to the east, and the cumulative total of everything here went over to the east and struck with near 5.0 level activity over the past few days. Take all the fours here over in the eastern Caribbean, add it together, equals near 5. So near 5 over here to the west, near 5 over here to the east, 6 out cumulative total over to the far east, now followed by a 5. It's all moving now. Down to the south we go. We talked about this in my last update last night. But 5.7 striking at Point Nemo, that pinkish colored earthquake. Let's get the pink colored earthquakes out of there. And here's everything that struck since. Multiple new deep earthquakes. And even the untrained eye should be able to see that we're dealing with a fair amount of new 5.0 level activity on top, or 4.9 plus. In the last day and a half, that's a fair amount. And it's all centered around where our deep earthquakes are. Deep earthquakes going from Indonesia, north up to our letter D at Japan, and south by southeast down to Tonga. So deep quakes, multiple fives, and the spacing on these fives. I can turn down the rings, but you should be able to see that we're somewhat equally spaced going out across this area with all about the same sized activity. Let me show you what just moved. USGS map even shows it. So a very low frequency wave of some kind, or ultra low frequency, or extremely low frequency. I don't know whether it's VLF, ULF, or ELF going across here, dropping off the same size quakes. It's a full magnitude higher, a 10 times, well, 10 times or more increase in power going right now. Taiwan also moved with 5.7, 4.9 struck last night at Hokkaido up in Japan. Over to the west, we go across the plate boundary. We're right at the tip of our arrow. Tip of the arrow points right up into Afghanistan, but check it out. Really, we're just on the plate boundary again. And we're getting the same sized earthquakes, 5 to 5.1 here. And then following that, a 5 to 5.1 over here next to Turkey, 
just northwest of Syria or northeast of Cyprus. But really, guys, come on, it's the same sized earthquakes going across a huge distance. In this case, we're 1,000, 2,000, almost 3,000 miles apart if we go around the bend of the plate. And we're two of the same size quakes just a couple hours apart. And this one struck, let's see, this one struck on last night at 23.23. So like 30 minutes before midnight UTC time. And then move forward to 15 hours and a five strikes over to the west following the plate boundary out of Afghanistan across Iran over to Turkey. Now there should be a new break in between Turkey and back over to Afghanistan. Halfway point between the two. This goes from the Caspian Sea south to the plate boundary in Iran. So the halfway point between these two quakes should break with a new quake that's bigger than what's on both sides. As we go over to the west, yesterday's 5.1 to 5.2 over in Greece, the halfway point where the two sets of rings overlap, it's pretty obvious we're in the eastern Aegean Sea. Going into Turkey, as far south as east of Crete or Rhodes, and as far north as Istanbul. Maybe even if as far north as the border with Romania. But right in the middle, you see where the two sets of rings overlap. That's where we watch. 200 mile stretch in each direction where the center is where the rings overlap. The magnitude will be the combined total of what's on both sides, and that puts us to 5.3. One moment, please. As for that, guys, uh, again, tis the season for allergy is sneezing. Anyway, here we are. We're gonna watch for a 5.3 to come in in the middle. As we go over to the west, we'll have to look at the smaller earthquakes. Look at the threes going across Europe, 3.0 plus. So pretty much all the flank of Europe, well, northeast, central, and southwest, moving with 3.0 level activity. Now, really, the way you need to look at this is all of Europe just moved on a 3.0 basis, going from Poland back down to the Pyrenees, back down to Gibraltar. And how are they connected? Well, the Craton. The Craton goes up, around, back down through France, back down through the Pyrenees, and terminates down here at Gibraltar. I've showed it to you many times in the past, but I will show it to you again right now on the topography. So this is what aerial or whatever you want to call it from space or planes or whatever. But take a look at this. We'll turn off the borders and labels. Just pick your favorite country in Europe. Here's Italy, for instance. But look at Eastern Europe. Do you see the S shape bend in the plate? Those are mountain ranges covered in trees. But we go up and around. It comes a little harder to see, but you can still see it. Makes a bend like this, goes up into Poland, makes a bend like this. Let's go make it north again. Goes over into Germany and France, goes back down and connects into the Pyrenees, and then goes back down and connects to Gibraltar. I'm going to turn on my place marks now. And what we're going to see are these triangles from the Smithsonian on the bends of the plate. Goes around and back up, of course, and check it out. The volcanoes are at each bend in the plate. Going through France, back down through Spain, back down through into Gibraltar. Okay, so that's what moved. That's a fair amount of movement for a day. And I think we're getting ready to take the next step up. So it's going to be fours across Europe all of a sudden. Then we can look between our current sets of earthquakes. It looks like, well, hold on. Well, looks like Germany, Switzerland. Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. 4.0 plus coming in on the plate boundary just to your north, for instance. Also, down to the south by southwest. Southwest Spain, or South Spain. Okay. Let's go over to the United States and check this out. Man, I'll, I'll tell you what. First of all, Alaska started to move. Over the past couple days, multiple fours going across over into mainland Alaska. Going right down to the Canada border. Then we skip over pretty much all of Canada. Check it out. Really, we do. We go from the U.S. border up here, down across the coast of Canada, <laughs> and pick back up on the coast of the United States. With diagonal line of earthquakes going down along the coast again, where all of California is shifting again. And I say again because it already happened once. Meanwhile, over to the east, the east coast got hit. Check it out, guys. Check it off the list if you were keeping track of areas that I warned. I warned them for three. Now, really interestingly enough, this earthquake came in at 2.4 to 2.5. Now you just saw it on the globe, it says 2.1. But when I click on it, go to the USGS site, it says 2.2. Weird stuff going on. 
Again, this is from the professionals. They downgraded, 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 downgraded. And I think they're going to take it down to 1.9. You know why. Or if you don't, I don't really want to tell you. You'll think I'm paranoid. But you know what? Rightly, rightfully so. I mean, rightfully f slow for me to be paranoid. Uh, when they start downgrading small earthquakes like this, it gets a little weird. Okay. Especially if I issue a warning. And I did. I issued a warning for a three to strike here going over to Delaware. And I mentioned Washington, D.C. with this diamond shape here in the middle. And this is in my video from two days ago. Two days ago, warn the spot. Last night it gets hit, and it got hit by 2.4 to 2.5. When I shared it, it was at 2.4 to 2.5. It had been up for hours. But then I wake up this morning, and it's 2.2. Then I check it again, and it's changed to 2.1. Down, 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 down we go. Okay. Hmm, I wonder why we're doing that. Now look at the rest of the Craton Edge going across the United States. We're starting to get a swarm outbreak in Oklahoma, a swarm outbreak in Texas, and twos trickling out over to the east following the edge of the Craton. Up to next to a bunch of power lines, by the way. Guess what's there in Virginia? Huge open pit mines, but it's not a blast, and power lines, huge power lines. So we're directly between power lines and pit mines. Anyway, if you don't know about the electro connection, the electric connection, electromagnetic connection to earthquakes, VLF, very low frequency, and what goes on the power lines, and how that can influence earthquake activity, or at least draw it to where the near the power lines are. Okay, VLF, very low frequency. But anyway, the untrained eye should be able to see that we're matching the craton edge almost perfectly in two days' time. Now, maybe I need to turn off the magnitudes so you can see it a little bit better. And maybe even turn down the rings a little bit so you can see a little better. But we start in the northwest, going out of Montana, down through Yellowstone, down to Texas, back up into Oklahoma, across and up the east coast. Now the middle points have been filled in where I issued my warning for Virginia. We're still waiting for an earthquake to strike up here right at the border of New York and Vermont, maybe as far north as Quebec. And we're waiting for an earthquake to strike here, Kentuck, Tennessee. So Kentuck, Tennessee border, and up here at the Vermont, <laughs> Vermont, New York border. I apologize if we're going to be waiting till the end of the week on that. Or if they come in and downgrade it or don't report it at all. Now, do you need me to show you the pumping operations in Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas? Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Kansas. Every single earthquake in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and even the earthquake over here in Arkansas in the New Madrid Seismic Zone are directly next to drill points. Every single quake in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. So this area here, I call it, well, I mean, it's a name I've called myself several times, the new New Madrid Seismic Zone. The old New Madrid Seismic Zone is over at the N-shape bend in the plate. The new New Madrid seismic zone, even though it's not called that, the, the more seismically prone area now, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and so forth from the drill points. And if you need me to show them to you, you probably don't pay attention very much to the seismic activity, or at least you don't look it up. And uh, again, it's not up for debate. I could waste hours of our time looking up all these quakes over here, but stacks of quakes, I guess I'll just go pull the biggest of the bunch and we'll pull that, and then you guys, if you want to go look up the rest. A stack of quakes in one spot is a swarm, okay? Now look how they've, look at, look how they've listed this one. Now there's nearest, there's towns nearby, but they're just listing it as Oklahoma. Oklahoma, come on guys, sing it with me. Let's go look it up. All right, well I guess with this you're going to have to say uh, the Beverly Hillbillies song, right? Okay, there we go. So, yeah, Oklahoma, yeah, right. We're at a bunch of new drill points. Where's the nearest town? Oh, right there. Nearest town. What's this place called? King Fisher or Dover. Now, all of these little square pads on the grounds are different drill points. So, I've showed these a thousand million times, but you get the idea, guys. When they start perforating the edge of the craton, and you do it in this number, where all of these little square things here are at different drill points, you start to understand how perforation works. It's just like a cardboard box. 
All right, it becomes easier to bend and it bends in a straight line or whatever line that you make the perforations in, or easier it does. That's where the stack of quakes is here in Oklahoma. Now up to the north, up in Kansas, if you go look it up, you might not find an actual well there at Marion, Kansas, for instance. You have to pull the state oil well records, which they have online, and you can look it up on a map to see where it is. I've already done this, so that's why I know it's here, but old 1950s and 1960s oil wells that were done right through this whole area. And again, the, the way I know about that is using the state oil well map for past lookups. I don't even have it on this computer. This is my wife's computer I took over. In case you guys don't know, I got hacked and all my computers got bricked. I could look it up. We could go pull the, you guys could do it. Hey, this is your student level. This is grad student level work. You guys go look it up, verify what the teacher said. Wait, you'll, north of Florence. So just north of Florence or just southeast of Marion, Kansas, you will find the old 1950s and 1960s oil well fields that used to be here. Now they've moved down to the south and up to the north. Here, I've got some of them marked on Google Earth from my place marks from like several years ago. See this one right here? Let me just zoom in and show you what you'll find if you zoom in and try and find it on imagery. See, it's just a farm field now. But you go back and look it up, obviously it's plugged. They give you the, the depth they drilled, the coordinates down to a very fine point. And that's where we are, huge old oil up in Kansas. Texas, everybody knows about the oil down in Texas, so I shouldn't need to tell you about that. We are more rare down here on the east-southeast side at Smiley, Texas. You guys remember Smiley? Several years ago, a four-point-something earthquake struck the frack wells here. There's just as many drill points down here in southeast Texas as we are in up in Oklahoma, for instance. Do you see all these little white splotches on the screen? Every single white splotch is an oil well. Oil now, not fracking. See? Okay, anyway, every one of these little white pads is a different oil well. And you see how many there are. I mean, I'm just ran rando going, we'll just rando do the fun zoom in. Oh, look at that. Look at that, the team of guys out there and gals, whatever. They got the derrick, they got the pump, they got... It just keeps on, I mean, it's insane. Now check it out, look at this Cherokee Canyon Reservoir. Yeah. yeah no problem there, a little fracking right next to it, inject the wastewater. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to get the water out of there. My God, I wouldn't want to swim in there or anything. You know that shit's leaking in there. You know it. Come on, man. Oh, no, it doesn't leak up. Dutch. It goes down several kilometers down in the cross. Yeah. Sure. Hey, dude, go drink it. Go drink it. Don't blame me for what happens. Go drink it. Go boil it, even. Put it through a boil like you normally would. You know, to get all the little nasties out of it, all the little microbes and stuff. Drink it then. Tell me what happens, bro. You'll be in my science experiment. You start growing gills. Or you already have them below your weird earlobes. Hey, did you guys know that a YouTube video maker several years ago made a video and he, he said that my earlobes match Keanu Reeves and that I must be Keanu Reeves. Yeah, this is a serious video, like serious. And that I must be Keanu Reeves trying to reimagine myself online. And I've retrained my voice because our earlobes match, you know. I'm the one, man. I'm the one. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Keanu since Cinsano Reeves. And we're going to come out of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. We're going to go down into California. Speaking of weird stuff. Go down in California. And we're going to follow this line of earthquakes down the famous San Andreas Fault. Everybody knows about the San Andreas. I don't need to tell you about it. And we all know it goes along the coast. We all know it goes in a diagonal line from northwest to southeast or southeast to northwest. What most people don't know is that once we go down the San Andreas, we get to the creeping section, and then just beyond it, we get to this place. Parkfield, California, the earthquake capital of the world. And viewers sent me merch from the town so we could you know, 
collect things from around the world uh, earthquake related. And it says it right on the mug, earthquake capital of the world, but why? Well, it's the San Andreas, but why? Well, we go down the San Andreas, and starting about 150 years ago, or about 100 years ago, they started drilling all of this for oil and gas. And more, more than 100 years ago, like the late 1800s is the earliest point where they were drilling here. And this is the San Andreas, and these are thousands of oil wells. And then we go down, and the earthquakes come down to Parkfield, and right where the big majority of the wells start, the drill points, guess where the earthquakes go? They jump over to the drill point. Then, following it like a path or a trajectory, but in the same line as the San Andreas, the momentum of this wave carries on down to the east by southeast. So we go down the San Andreas, we jump over to the drill points, and we go down this way. Well, what's down here? See this? What are those? Uh, well, I, you don't even need me to sh tell you. If you can see the screen, it's a shadow of a jack, but look how many there are. Look, it's not a jack or pump storage yard. This is a massive oil pumping operation that goes around all of Bakersfield and through it. So up here to the north, all of this is drilled. Again, you can see the oil well, so you don't need me to describe them for you. We go down through the town and we go through the farm fields. No exaggeration. This isn't for pumping water. This is oil and gas. And we carry on through the farm fields. Do you follow me? We're going down this way. And we're down here at the south tip of the valley. So really, all of this from up here at Parkfield, down across the San Andreas, down around the south tip of the valley, and back up like a giant letter J, is all drilled. And I can prove that. I can zoom in randomly on any spot in here going along the San Andreas, and you will see insane overdrive drill points. And there's San Andreas, there's drill points. Now we keep going down around the bend of the valley. They've done whole mountain ranges this way. And it really actually begs the question, where do they get the time and the resources to do this 150 years ago? Anyway, going down, maybe it was already here. And maybe we just rediscovered all the drill points. Maybe it was already here because there was somebody else that was already out here. And this thing right here, this giant triangular shape that I pointed out many, 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 many times, this thing goes back and we've got ourselves a giant star fort that's 300 miles long. And I'm not exaggerating. You can see the edge of it here. I will draw it again. I, I have to show this in almost every update now just because there's so much happening along it that the drill points go along it on the north pinnacle tip. But we go down to here, and then this classic star fort shape, we go, again, I'm drawing it for you roughly, but from here back down to here, from there to there. It's an unmistakable star fort shape on this side and on this side. Okay, so this is one of them. There's another one next to it that's harder to see that goes up and comes to a pinnacle tip where Reno is built at the pinnacle tip in between. And you can, you can see it, but it's a little harder to see. And it comes back down and meets up with the southern tip of the star right here. So really what we're doing is we're going up and back down this way. There's a third one that's even harder to see, but again, its pinnacle tip is pretty obvious, and it goes down to a giant crater, and it comes back down this way. I'm not doing paradeli, guys. This is actually in the freaking topography. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing things. Paradeli is when you see something, a shape or a face in something. No, this is a real crater on the backside of whatever that giant star fort is. But each line of the star fort that I just showed you is 300 miles long from this pinnacle tip down to here. And then it's another 100 miles this way, almost exactly 100 miles. It's kind of hard to see because it looks like it's blown away on the backside over here. On the side of here, the side of the Star Fort, we've got our nuclear test sites and Area 51. So you want to tell me that that's chance or coincidence that on one side, oh, and the other side we have 
29 Palms Military Base, Marine Training Base, and Bombing Range. Marine Bombing Range on this side, Nuclear Bombing Range on this side, and Area 51. And in the middle, Edwards Air Force Base. Directly in the middle, Edwards Air Force Base. Where they launched the B-1s and all the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me it's chance and coincidence again. I'm going to keep telling you there's something going on there because the earthquakes are going out to the front. We've got drill points along the sides. We've got freaky military bases there. And we're swarming out with earthquakes at this point. And there's no nuclear test going on there now. Here, let me show you. Out here in Nevada. Indian Springs, eh? We need to get out there and nuke that shit. We need to get out there and nuke that stiff. Now, there could be some reason they're doing it. Like they have a military base on the right side, on the left side, and in the middle. And it may be that there's something down in there that they need to contain. You know, what if, and let me just point this out to you. Here are our nuclear test sites, like I've said a million times. We've got all the nuke sites around here. This whole valley, every one of these little craters, well, little, every one of these huge craters is a different underground nuclear test. Google Earth has taken the time to update each one. Operation Tendrack, December 7th, 1962, 0 to 20 kilotons. But that if they're doing that, and here's Area 51, and here's the nuke test sites going through the valley, down to the south, to Doomtown, as they call it, that they blew it at the surface. And that's where the side of the Star Fort is. Comes right out to it, to the pinnacle tip of it. So what could be down in the ground that maybe the military would be worried about and containing? I don't know, maybe a long time ago, there was some kind of people that buried themselves and put themselves into some kind of, I don't know, suspended animation or something. I don't know, they sleep like locusts down in the ground and come up every once in a while. I don't know. Some reason they would build a bunch of military bases and blow the shit out of it on both sides and put a freaking Air Force base right in the middle of it. Maybe it has power. And it's kind of wireless power, but like they need it or something. Come on, like they need wireless power. So there'd be some other reason they would do it there. Put all the military there, I mean. You'd have to tell me it's chance or coincidence that Area 51 and the nuke sites are on one side and 29 Palms is on the other and that Edwards Air Force Base is directly in the middle, middle pinnacle tip of it. And you're going to tell me it's chance? No. No, no, no. So earthquakes are going out to it. Why? Well, apparently it's having some kind of very low frequency vibration that's causing earthquakes. Maybe it's projecting very low frequency. A lot of maybes. I don't have any answers to it other than to tell you these are the locations. That's what it looks like. And we have earthquakes going around the outside edge of it. Let's recap. A line of earthquakes going down the coast. Everybody knows about the San Andreas. No big deal. But then we get down to Parkfield, we jump over to the drill points. That is a big deal. The drill points are aiding in the flow going across down to the south tip of the valley, where we pick back up on the tip of the Star Fort. Now along the California-Nevada border, we do have an increase in the number of earthquakes. Think of this like a drummer beating their drum, and they start a snare drum, starts rolling the drum really fast. That's where we are now. The snare drum is increasing, and the amount that it's being hit, the strength at which it's being hit, is also increasing. So we're going from zeros and ones up to near three. That's a big increase to go to 2.8 out of ones and twos up to almost a full magnitude. The number of earthquakes speaks for itself. I mean, look at the screen. There's, this is just two days worth of quakes. Has any location changed? No. All the spots which are moving are just like the spots which I showed you this past two updates. Up in the Northern Valley, down here to our super volcano between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. Then going down to the actual mapped super volcano at Long Valley, all the way around it in a triangle or a ring of earthquakes. One lone earthquake out at the rising bulging magma lacolith in the valley at La Grande. And the fires that broke out there over the past several years. I think we have an explanation for the fires now. You can stop blaming them on people. Mother Nature is creating these fires coming up out of the ground on a clear day with no explanation. This right here next to where the earthquake is, this ring-like shape is a dome. And that dome or bulge in the plate is circular in shape. That's a lacolith. Now the size of the lacolith is huge, that's big. Across from it over here is Long Valley Caldera, the super volcano. And it's mapped, it's got a thousand cubic kilometers of melt down below. It's lined with its own volcanoes. But the lacolith right across from it, 
and the earthquakes and the fires are breaking out around this thing. Indisputable, that's where the quake is. So let's recap. Line of quakes coming down the coast, going down to the drill points, jumping over to the valley. Line of earthquakes coming down eastern California at the volcanoes. I didn't even look these up up north. You'll just, maybe you can go look them up if you want to or take my word for it. 2.7 to 2.8 there. Then a 2.7 to 2.8 at the supervolcano between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. And then down to the south, the supervolcano getting hit there. Nuclear test sites getting hit along the Star Fort. And then we get down here to Ridgecrest. Ridgecrest, California. There's a diagonal line of earthquakes again going into Ridgecrest. Then around it, around the Star Fort shape. Do you see that? Let me zoom in and show it to you. So we come down and we go down this way. This is called the Garlock Fault. We call it the Morlock Fault. That's what you need to call it. Call it the Morlock Fault. You know why. Okay. Coming down. <laughs> Sorry, I had to crack all kinds of jokes. So going down to Ridgecrest, going down the Garlock, going around the Star Fort, and then going down to Southern California. Let's go look over on Google Earth. And my microphone almost just fell over again. I apologize. Okay. Ridgecrest. Starting up here, north of Ridgecrest, the earthquakes begin somewhere up in here. I could pull the coordinates, it doesn't matter. We start right on the edge of these. These are rising, bulging points. These are actually obsidian, black, volcanic rock. These are lacoliths, but very shallow. Now, humans have come in. Geothermal turbines, pipelines, drill points. Drill points that go into these places. And some of them, they've done right on top of, the, of a butte of an actual old spatter cone. Top of the spatter cone, they drill in, inject water to get steam at Kozo Volcanic Field. That's where the quakes start. Then we go in a diagonal line northwest to southeast on the east side of all this. Now take a look. Here's one of those rising domes. Let me get that in 3D. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was trippy. Okay, there we are. Here's one of the rising domes, and next to it is what happens after they get too much pressure on them. Underneath, they explode. Well, they'll leak or explode. In this case, it's more like something that happened like over at Canary Islands, whole lines of them like this with lava flows that go out into China Lake. Now down here, south side of China Lake, is Ridgecrest, the experimental facility for Raytheon and Boeing and blah, 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 US government rocket facilities and everything right there. And here's the Starfort Edge. Starfort Edge, built right on it, is a racetrack. Several mines. All sorts of power generation. And nuke, nuke sites. And so forth. I don't know. Oh, Vegas is built right on the side of it, too. Literally. Or is it on the inside of it? Vegas is built on the inside of it. Vegas is built on the inside of this thing, on the back side of the Star Fort. Okay. As we go down to the south, we get into the L.A. Basin. We have to look up the earthquakes in central L.A. because this is just significant. This is pretty much right down the mile of the spots we were showing in the last update. Or two, two updates ago? Two updates ago, we were pretty much down to the mile. So, look, I know earthquake-prone areas like California, it's not that big of a deal on a one, but if it's down to the mile... I just want to see where we are. Ah, uh, well, now we know why. There we are. The Baldwin Hills, all the drill points here. Look at all the oil and gas wells that are here in L.A., north of Inglewood. Maybe I need to turn on my borders and labels so you can see the town names. So, of course, everybody knows L.A. South L.A., there's Inglewood. There's the Baldwin Hills. And we're right next to it. I mean, literally, we're down within a mile. Let's go up to the east by northeast by... What is that, 15 miles away? Silver Lake, California. Now we're getting even closer to my last update. So in my last update, just a couple days ago, we were showing North LA. There we are, oh, right next to Hollywood. Anything else here? Oh, wow, look at that. We're at another racetrack. Now, let me tell you something about these things. If you, it, well, for instance, this racetrack, a loop antenna. But what would you do if I told you that sports is, has an occult nature to it and that the courts that you play on are shaped 
for a reason like this, but it has to do with origami. You guys ever do origami? You guys ever fold things into multiple things into other things? So for instance, we can, taking the lines in the shapes of a, well, of a basketball court or of a tennis court, that you can fold it and it will turn into something with something inside of it. So if you fold and take and fold these into a three-dimensional shape, you will actually find that this makes a shape within a shape, or in, in this case, something within a cube. And what you'll find is you will have a ball with a rising center with a dome around it inside of a cube. And that's on purpose. On purpose, it was designed that way. Now, soccer is the same thing. You could go over here and look at football or whatever you want to call it, soccer, football. The same thing where you're going to have a floating orb in the center and you're going to have this shape, which looks like a planetarium, three-dimensionally shaped down below inside of the box at the center, looking up to the orb. Sun worship, that kind of stuff. Occultism. And that's why they're shaped that way. Anyway, so it's built on the side of there. Okay, all right, just wanted to, how do I know this? Dutch, where did you learn these things? Oh, I don't know, here and there. Been watching too many YouTube videos. All right, let's go down across California, Southern California, follow this line of quakes down to the border. And you'll notice there's only two earthquakes on the east side of Salton Sea and the rest are over to the west. So what's on the east side of Salton Sea and what's on the west side of Salton Sea? Let's go look on the USGS map and I'll show you. East side of Salton Sea is the San Andreas, turning into the Imperial Fault, and there's a volcano right here where they meet. West side, we actually need to turn on the US Fault Zone map. Then you'll see it, San Jacinto and Elsinore Faults. They're like side chutes or side roads off a main avenue. And it turns out the flow goes down the side roads as opposed to the main avenue as you would expect it to go down the San Andreas, but instead it's taking a path of least resistance, like a flood, instead of like traffic, where you'd think it would be smarter to go around the main route. Instead, path of least resistance, straight line. Or like a car going too fast down a straight road, and then it hits a curve, it tends to maintain momentum. And that's what's going on there. So let's recap all of California. A big amount of movement is taking place, but magnitudes are not that big right now. And this is where everybody, including some of my viewers even, get lulled into a sense of, oh, it's just, just some small activity. And I'd say, ah, look, we're on near 3.0 level. We're going across the edge of the North American Graton. We're going all the way to the East Coast. Virginia's moving, Maine's moving. The Northwest is certainly moving. Canada's leaving out the picture, but the swarms tell us something's going on. I haven't even talked about Yellowstone or Utah, but like I said, none of the locations have changed. We haven't really progressed except for over to the east of Virginia. The rest are all sitting there starting to swarm now where we weren't swarming in my last update. That to me says the wave's arriving. When a wave arrives, we see a big increase, at least a magnitude. So if we're at threes, we'd go back up to fours. Every spot where there's threes, we go up to fours. Let's go take a look. Okay, Texas and coast of California right now is where we would go immediately. We would immediately be going up to fours in the next few days to complete it. Check it out. Fours on the coast of Alaska. Fours on the coast of Mexico. Hmm, I wonder who's due for fours next. Gee, it's the middle point between two areas. Huge thousands of miles moving on a 4.0 basis up in Alaska. Thousands of miles moving across all of Central America going into the Gulf of Mexico. And then we're sitting high and dry with just a few ones, twos, and couple threes on either side. Look in the middle, that's where we watch. Okay, Hawaii, you guys, hey, you're gonna go next up now. So I warned you already, it's now three days in on the warning. 5.0 incoming, most likely right next to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park too, right next to Kilauea. I don't think that'll be that big of a shock. You have the big lava flow that took place and is still taking place. Speaking of big lava flows taking place, Stromboli did something over in Italy. It's not that big of a deal, even though it was a big eruption. Stromboli does these Strombolian eruptions, lava flows, effuse diffusion eruptions that send out lava flowing out, but not big ash clouds. 
Anyway, that's taking place. I have not checked the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center either. We're all over the place today on today's update. Let's go take a look and see what's going on on the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center. Saban Shah. Hey, look at this. Shit show supervisor. I need to get that one for YouTube. Okay. Sabancay in Peru, Sanjay in Ecuador, Nevado del Ruiz in Colombia, Nevado de Chilean in Chile, strong puff emissions, puffing strong. Nishinoshima in Japan, Popocate Patal in Mexico. All right, okay, I'm just looking for new eruptors or any big blasts that would be on the list. We don't have any new additions to the list other than the regular suspects. And they really are the regular suspects. So we could go over here to Japan, for instance. South Japan, Sakurajima, Suwanizajima, right where the rings are overlapping pretty much. The middle point between our earthquakes on the coast of Japan and the middle point between the earthquakes down at Okinawa and Taiwan. Over to the east, almost due east, we have Nishinoshima Volcano going on the Izu Ridge. Now that was added last week. We don't normally see it on the list, but it's not weird for it to be on the list. A new earthquake just struck there as we're talking. 4.8 to 5.0 earthquake just struck right at the H-shaped plate boundary. Hold on. Just hit as we're pointing at the area. I hate it when that happens. Makes me feel like something weird's going on. Start pointing my mouse at the area. It's like, bing, earthquake. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Hold on. Another one just hit. It was just red. Just red there on the screen over here at the California-Nevada border. Oh, God. All right. We're going over to Japan. New 4.8. Does the USGS even have it? Yeah, they've got it. 4.8 Izu Islands, Izu Ridge. Okay, this is perfect time for me to wrap it up. It's a lot of movement for two days. Look at the United States. Imagine this. Imagine this scene, guys. 10 years ago, I didn't have this. Or 12 years ago. I did not have the Craton graphic yet. I hadn't found it yet. Instead, I was just seeing this a line of earthquakes going across the United States. And it wasn't nearly as complete because I wasn't using the full USGS feed and European feed. Anyway, saw a line coming out of the Northwest going down to Texas. And then it goes back up and brings up into Oklahoma and goes up the East Coast. I started showing it in videos. And you'd think that I was showing Bigfoot. People denied the earthquakes. People said they weren't possible. People said I was faking the quakes and everything. Anyway, this is a big discovery that there's a flow going across the plates. It's not just the United States this way. It's every plate this way. And the flow is going from where the tension's created, out on the plate boundaries, and flowing across the craton edges, out across in the opposite direction, trying to equalize or balance or distribute the weight, or, well, not weight, the power across the region. Look at Europe. Europe is doing the same thing the United States is doing, but it's going in the opposite direction. We got a five over in Eastern Europe, and then a bunch of twos and threes and near fours going over to the West, out following the plate boundary. Let me show you Europe. We got a bunch of earthquakes striking over here, fours and fives, then threes and fours and twos and ones, spreading out all the way to the T intersection at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where we get the cumulative total of what strikes in Europe out over to the West, out of the Azores. So we get fives out here, in Turkey, a spread, a stepping stone path of earthquakes going across and around Europe, and then cumulative total striking out at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. That's what happens in Europe. We go across the other way, and it goes across the United States this way. Points across Utah, goes down to Texas, back across and up the East Coast, tries to make it back out this way. Either way, we're trying to equalize to the opposite side of whatever we're on. And there is some debate as to what we're on, which I understand. I'm actually starting to debate it myself, so. <laughs> welcome aboard, Dutch, right? You know, it's like, oh, God, here we go. Okay. Speaking of welcome aboard, take a look at the lake. Man, we got autumn colors in full effect. Let me do a little camera turn here as I'm talking. Do you guys have an earthquake plan? I've never been in an earthquake, so I don't know what it feels like to be in an earthquake. But I would think that if it's a big quake, you're going to need to immediately take shelter underneath a table or a desk. You're not going to want to run around and scream earthquake to everybody and let them know it's happening. I think everybody already know it's happening. So table or desk, good idea. Also, change of clothes, set of shoes, an emergency kit of some kind. Probably should do that too. I already have one. I have it for severe weather, 
Also, I guess for earthquakes, I could use it for that. But severe weather, power outages, that kind of stuff, it comes in handy. Even if you lose your set of keys, extra set of keys in the emergency kit, you'll end up getting them anyways. Getting them out to use them. You'll be like, oh yeah, they're in the emergency kit. Whew. I always say this one, but uh, you know, again, people forget to do it. Set of shoes by the side of your bed or hard bottom slippers. It's so basic, but if there's broken things across the floor, glass or whatever, you're gonna want a, a pair of shoes by the side of your bed. You're not gonna wanna crawl around and try and find them in the dark. So make sure you have that kind of stuff. I mean, assuming it's, the, it's nighttime. Nighttime, power's out, things are broken across the house. Earthquakes just hit, you've woken up. Time to put on the slippers that you have by the side of your bed. Okay, anyway, saving this as a video. No huge earthquakes have hit yet. Oh, how could I forget? Jeez. Easter Island. Easter freaking Island. You gotta be kidding me, man. Guys, listen. I can't stop. I, we're not done yet. God. Easter freaking Island. Let me take you over to my YouTube community page. Well, first of all, we're on my YouTube page. Here, well, the 29th and the 5th and, let's see, the 19th. Starting on the 19th of September and moving forward for 30 days till now, basically. Not 30 days, it's been 20 days. But on the 5th, I showed Easter Island. And I talked about the spacing of Easter Island going across the Pacific and down here at a place called Rapa Nui Volcano. And I brought up Rapa Nui, I zoomed in on it, and we measured from the middle of the volcanic group over to the Pitcairn Islands, to the middle of the Pitcairns. And it's 1,400 miles. And we measured from the middle of the Pitcairn Islands over here to Tahiti and French Polynesia, and it's 1,400 miles. And we measured from French Polynesia over here to the center of American Samoa Volcanic Group, and it's 1,400 miles. And we measured from South America over to the Ascension Island out here in the middle of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and it's exactly 1,400 miles as well, exactly down to the mile. So 1,400 from Ascension to South America, 1,400 from Easter Island to Pitcairn, 1,400 from Pitcairn over to French Polynesia, and 1,400 from French Polynesia over to Tahiti, American Samoa. 1,400 miles spaced all the way across the whole freaking planet, that's man-made. That can't be natural. And then I brought up the heads here on Easter Island at Rapa Nui, the giant Easter Island heads. And I said those, in my broadcast a few weeks back, must be made of geopolymer. And then in my fifth broadcast here on the fifth, I brought them up again and them being buried up to their necks and so forth. So imagine my shock two days later when this happens. Within a week of me showing the 1,400 mile spacing of the islands across the Pacific, where I reached 200,000 people and I focused on Easter Island, now all of a sudden, sudden fire breaks out across the whole island, destroying many of the statues. My life is so freaking weird. So let's go click on the story, see what Reuters has got to say. The Moai statues face irreplace irreplaceable damage, irreparable damage after the wildfire, after a wildfire. And they show this. Now look at the, the caption. Damaged Moai statues are seen after a wildfire at a local park in Easter Island, Chile, in this undated handout photo. The, the government handed these out. Undated. Let's go see what the rest are. Wow. Amazing. Green grass burning. Wow. Amazing. Green grass with black stuff coming up in between. Now some of these photos, this first one, somebody said was in National Geographic from 20 years ago. But these are the current ones that they're showing on social media. Now, I've seen something like this before. I have. Do you want to see? Wait, do you see this? Chile, oh, I'm sorry, Peru, 2011, crack in the ground. One week before the Japan mega quake, this happened. Look familiar. It almost looks like what's going on at Easter Island. A giant multi-mile long, 20 or so mile long crack in the ground formed and hot, boiling, burning mud 
came up. People died. It sucked their houses in. Now look at the green grass. <clears throat> See anything? N notice it? I'm talking about this picture right here. Ha, the end time. Yeah, yeah, I bet. There's the house in there. You see it? There's the house roof. But this burning mud came up out of the ground, and this happened one week before the Japan mega quake. One week before. I covered it back in 2011 when it happened. Now, where did it happen? It happened down here in Peru. But I'm going to show you something, and I'm going to turn off our grid so you can see this. Here is Peru. And coming off of Peru is this thing. And it goes across, over, back up. These are undersea mountain volcanoes. It's a crescent shape. And it goes all the way up and meets with Hawaii. And I've shown this so many times. Now, guess who's right along this path? Let me, let me show you over here on Google Earth. There it is. There's Rapa Nui. There's Easter Island. And we go up into Peru, which back in 2011 had almost the exact same thing happened, but it was miles long in a crack. A giant split 100 meters wide and three kilometers long. Miles long. Did I say 20 miles long? I'm wrong. Three kilometers. I think they found out that it was, this is an old story. This was posted on February of 2011. Notice, February 26, 2011. March 11th, March 11th, or March 9th, <laughs> is when the um, Japan thing happened. So it wasn't one week before, it was two weeks. G guys, I'm going on memory from freaking 11 years ago, okay? So two weeks before the Japan quake, the Pacific started to go into overdrive. Big cracks in the ground with boiling, burning mud came up in Peru. Now we have something going on that looks almost eerily similar. over here at Rapa Nui, which they're trying to now blame on a person. They're trying to say a person went out and set these fires that destroyed the heads. I, got a, I, got, I did the math on this. I did a rough calculation. There's about 300 million square miles on the planet, just in general. So for me to get it down, let's just say we got it down to 10, 10 square miles. That will let's just take... 300 million divided by 10, what does that mean? 30 million, right? Okay. So I'm trying to get it down to a small area, and I'm talking about an island just a few miles across. So let's just say it's 10. So we divide 300 million square miles on the planet by 10, because I tried to get it down to 10 miles, talking about the island. One in 30 million chance just for that, just to get it the island. Now, how often has it burned to where the heads burn and break? Well, it's the first time. So the first time in 1,500 years. So now we can take... I'm going to get the calculator out because we're going to start getting up into some freaking high numbers. So we have 30 million. And we're going to times that by how many times has this happened in 1,500 years? None? Okay, 1 in 1,500 times 1,500. Then we're going to take in how many times do I talk about Easter Island and, and mention the heads. So let's go over to my videos and take a look. I can already tell you. It started on the 14th or 15th. Or no, it's 19th of September. I never talk about the heads on Easter Island. Ever. And look how many videos I have. Let's go, let's go see if we have them all. Hold on. Does it even say? How many videos do I even have? 92 million views. That's not right. It's way higher than that. Uh, it doesn't tell me how many videos I have, but I'm here to tell you it's in the 4,000 range, 3,500 to 4,000 range. So we'll take it by 3,000, 1,500. We're going to one in 3,000 for the videos because I've talked about it a couple times. So Okay, 135 100 million, 135 trillion. Is that right? Zero, zero, zero. This is 100 millions. This is billions. Yep, 135 trillion. I have a one in 135 trillion chance. And let's just say I'm wrong on a factor of, of zero. Let's take a zero off that. I'm 135 billion chance. I'd have a chance of winning Powerball 100 times over in a row. And speaking of that, letter D has just been hit. Right on the south side of the D, 
with a new deep five. Deep earthquake on our letter D. And there you go. So I had to compute those odds because I wanted you to see what the chances of me talking about Easter Island and having it catch on fire and all the heads burn, break or whatever, that it's a 1 in 135 billion or 135 trillion chance of it being chance. So, I mean, it could be chance. But again, if we're getting to that level, to me, it seems deliberate. That seems like somebody did it. Or we're on the edge of an extremely large earthquake like back in 2011, and I need to up my warnings by a factor of a 1,000. If that happens, so help me God, if we get within two weeks from now, we have a 9.0 earthquake, the biggest in decades for the whole planet, I'll come back and address it. But right now, now we're going to save this as a video and get it out over on YouTube. I hope my rant was at least effective in getting your attention that there's something weird going on in the world of geophysics for Easter Island heads to burn the day or two days after I talk about them. That's freaky. That to me says, hey, somebody's trying to hide the freaking heads are geopolymer or man-made. And I mean man-made as in constructed somehow, not carved out of stone. Somebody tried to tell me that they, some local leader in Rapa Nui says that they're petrified wood. I don't know, man. I don't think so. I think it looks like geopolymer, and that's what everybody's trying to hide it. We need to, we need to cut them open and break them open and go count the rings of the petrified wood in the tree. That's what we need to do. Right? <laughs> All right, guys. Much love. Peace out.